Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Karen. If you're new here, thank you for stopping by. If you've been here before and are returning, I really appreciate your presence. In today's video, I'd like to review a few jackets that I've made, or should I say part of my jacket collection. Um, I have in it a couple of uh, blazers and some jackets that I've made. Some I've made this year and you are quite familiar with, others I've made before I started this channel or when my sewing journey began. So the first one I want to start off with, and let me just say this before, some of them I've loved so much, I've made several times different fabrics, so they might look different or the same to you depending on what your thoughts are. Um, others I've made using the same pattern out of fear of trying something else. So we'll see where those fall today. Um, the first one I'll be looking at is Butterick 5616. And this one I made back in 2019 or maybe 18. I think I made this back in 2018 when I just started uh, sewing. Um, I liked it for this one, which was view B. I had some fabric I thought I could, so I said, why not? Again, um, at the time, I did not have a serger, and I think I'll put up actual videos of when I made them, what they looked like, and they should look a bit the same, but just to, just to show you. So this is my camel jacket, actually my first attempt at making a jacket. Um, I wanted to try it, and I did uh, attempt top stitching as well. But here is where I think I draw the line because I didn't have um, a serger. So I was using the, um, the I wasn't using a Juki at the time. I was using a Brother. That's my first machine I started with. And so I was using the foot, one of the press up on the machine that gave you that finished look. But again, this is what convinced me that I had, I had to find another way to finish this. So I'm showing you where my journey started, what it looked like. So this is the inside of this jacket. And for me, this was not acceptable. And so when I started and my garments looked like this, I definitely tried to improve. I tried to do the sewing and this is where the insecurity started because I thought I'm, my garments are never going to look the way they should. I'm looking at stuff in the store and they do not look like this. They could not look like this. So why is it mine's looking like this? And at this point, I figured more or less there has to be a better way because you're looking at the outside, it looks fine. You would not have known if I didn't tell you or show you. But again, I was not satisfied at what it looked like or what I accomplished. Outside, you would never know. It looks okay, but for me, 2018 this was not acceptable again i just started so i was learning but i see others posting their stuff and i'm like it looks so gorgeous it doesn't look like mine and mine looks so much different inferior it could the inside could not look like this so at this point i'm telling you to show you that i think i've grown and i think i've improved where i started from or where i was naturally but um Things weren't always like this. Again, it came out of the concept of wanting to learn to do stuff without the serger. And then when I finally got the um, brother serger as well, I didn't like it. It was noisy and it was hard to um, thread. So 
again, <laughs> proof of the first um, make that I really didn't like because of the way I thought it looked. The next one is still gonna be 5616, and I made that one back there. Let me grab it. This one was made, I think, when I just started the channel a year or two years ago. I, I don't, I think it's a year ago, but give me one sec. I think it's a year ago. And this dress is one of my favorite. Sometimes I wear it open and I'm able to close it. It's Simplicity 8014, one of my favorite dresses. And this is made um, in a cotton sateen, very light cotton sateen. This was from Minerva, I think, if I have not butchered that name. Yeah, so back to this. This is the other one. Same pattern, 5616, I'm a bit too close. 5616, and um, I love this one. This one is, again, after I thought I perfected the, front seam. And so with these, I kind of turn them on onto themselves on the inside. I don't think it's quite a flat felt stitch. I just, I was doing my thing. So there is the inside and I think I had a sew along as to what I did this one and how I did it. So again, like most of my jackets like this, I do a double yoke because I want to leave the inside closed. This one, I did nothing to the sleeve, just left it, left it open. No adjustments, except for the fact that I did not put the pockets on the way they have the cap. I just put it in here, but you'll never know because it's just blended in. This fabric, I think I got from fabric.com way back, and it was, or it is an upholstery fabric, and I kind of thought, I love the color combination. It was quite my style of color, vibrant. So I made a little jacket from it. I didn't have much. I think it was about two yards of that. Um, and so I did this. I think this was one and a half um, yards of pattern required. The next one, I'm sorry. I think I have about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. Sorry. The next one, the same pattern, is going to be this one, which I made, I think, last year for sure. I had this yellow linen, I wasn't sure what to do with it, and I have a jacket like this. It's just that it's a PK fabric, which I wasn't loving. And so I was like, why not try to make something like that? And then I saw something on Pinterest where this bold look with these little jackets were happening with the pockets, huge pockets on the front and top stitching. Again, this is yellow, so my top stitching wasn't gonna do much of an impact. So I just did my thing with the seam and instead of um, attempting a flat felt, I had some yellow bias tape. So I just matched them up, blended it and had a different look on the inside of the jacket. I did the same thing for the front coming down there. I did front seam on the sleeves. Again, double yoke on the back. And like I said, I had the two pockets and I kinda did the um, top stitching on the outside just to create something different. Um, the pockets were bigger than the recommended size on the thing, on the pattern. But again, I was looking at something on Pinterest. I don't think I got what the design actually is supposed to be, but I made it my own. And so I'm fine with it. I absolutely love it um, compared to the other yellow one I've got. So okay. as a point of reference, this is the yellow jacket that I wanted to kind of um, mirror. Again, it's a PK, or I don't know how you pronounce it, but uh, fabric, kind of like a honeycomb blend. 
I have this jacket and I absolutely love it. And I wanted to do something like it, mirror it, something. And I always look at the inside of how this one is a Christopher Banks. I don't know if you guys ever know of that brand or remember it. I hardly see them around now. Uh, um, this one and Coldwater Creek were a couple of my favorites. But I've had this kind of jacket forever. And I tend to look at the insides of how these things are finished. Again, it looks like just the usual serger. But again, I'm just trying to do my own thing and it works out better for me. But this is the jacket that I've always wanted to copy the insides and just mirror the stuff that I see on ready-made garment and just make them my own. The next is the same 56 Butterick 5616. And this is the last of my Butterick. So I've made one, two, three, four. Perhaps there's another, but I might have given that away. Can't find it, but who knows. This one you guys already know. This was made last year? Yeah, the year in the, we're in March. This was made last year, I think fall or winter, when I had this fabric. Um, I don't quite remember where I got it. I really don't. But I decided to make this jacket because I think I I think it's a good combination for most of the stuff I already have in my closet. It works well. I again I use the same pattern, just my own little style. This one has a flap where most of the others do not. The other one had a square flap, and I just adjusted to make this the, the, the flap that's um, on the pattern. None of them are closed, surprisingly, not sure why. This one I did a little different. I used the bias tape to enclose the edge right here. No buttons on this or anything in case I wanted to turn it up. So what I did was also made the finish on the inside. So if I'm turning it up, this is what you see. If you wanted to roll the cuff up, this is what you would see and not the white of the fabric. So the little things for me is what makes the difference. Again, the double yoke on the inside of this jacket. Front seam. This piece I use the um, the serger foot on my machine for that one. And the reason why I did this was I didn't want to have that bulk on the pocket in between. And I don't like that piece, but it is a part of the process. The back, I continued to do the frame seam because it gave the a better finish. This one, the serger thing right there. I flat, I top stitched, sorry, this belt on onto it. And I used a different color, a lighter color thread in hope that it might just stand out. But really, I don't think it did. You have to come close to see it, but it still works. I think I like it. I think. I think I like it. I can wear it as a casual thing if I just want to put something on and still look uh, put together. And I can wear this to work with black um, slacks or something like that with a nice top under it or a nice shirt. So I think all in all, this one is a win. And the reason I like 15 Butterick, Butterick 5616 so much is because of, I think, the versatility. You can change a fabric, end up with a different jacket. And it's funny because I'm always making the same pattern. But to me, it has a different look every time. It's 5106. That's 5106. And I made view A, which is this cute little one right here. Let me see if I can show you the pattern thing on the back. So I did view A. This was a pretty simple make and I was surprised at how well it turned out in terms of the fabric. I got this fabric from Style Maker Fabric back in the day. I like unique pieces and again when I'm buying I don't know what I'm doing with them. Most of the times I just it just stands out to me and I'm like there has to be something about it, so I grab it. This one, 
if you see it. It's like an embossed, it's raised brocade like fabric. I was like, what could I do with this? Not a dress or anything like that. And it has good weight to it in the sense that it's stable. It's a knit, it stretches, but it's very stable. So I was like, why not just make a jacket? And that's what I did. I looked at what I had and I was like, um, I like this one. I've tried making that one again, but somehow the fabric choice wasn't the best. I tried using a red, uh, a red linen rayon and it didn't turn out the way I liked it. If I can find it, I'll show you. That's another fail. Um, it's before I started this channel, so I'll just show you for reference. So this is the inside of this jacket. Just the regular finishing with this. I think I got the lining from Mood. It's just a stripe. Yeah, but I like the way it turned out in terms of the finish on the end. I had this little thing in the back that I think I got. I was expecting to get it, this stretch seam. This piece right here, I need to stitch this back in. This was where I took my jacket in and out because I finished the bottom on the machine and went back through the arm. And I need to um, hand sew this back right here. I thought about putting a, um, a shoulder pad in there, but I changed my mind, so I need to fix that. But this is how the overall jacket looks. These buttons I got from Mood. And they're all the same except this one, but when nobody will know. Yeah. But I absolutely love this jacket. It's like a mandarin collar kind of thing going on. Row six, I've made another one in red. Hold on. Okay, so I said I had uh, made another one of the 5106 in red. It's a rayon linen blend. I used this from another, the lining came from Mood and I used what was left from another project jacket that I'll show you in a minute. So this is the inside. It's not yet closed because I was thinking of um, shoulder pads, but it's ironed and ready to be closed. Again, this is another one that I really didn't like how it looked. I guess the fabric and I need to put shoulder pads on. So I just tossed it to the side and said I wasn't happy with how it looked and I wasn't going to use it. There are a couple pieces that I was like I could do better. And I use these as examples of where I'm coming from, what improvements I need to make. And sometimes I'm extremely hard on myself because I think I don't do muslins, I can't, it's just, for me, it's like I'm putting all my energy in something and then I have to stop and go back and do the, the, uh, the real fabric. It saves me the, fr the fabric and the mistakes, but I, I'm just not there yet. I can't do muslins, it's like double work. Even though I'm doing a blazer, it's double work. You're making actually two pieces and combining them together, but I, I just can't do muslin, so. This was a, another piece that I thought after doing it, okay, well, it's not a waste, it's a practice. So I have it up like many others that I've attempted and not finished because I just think they're failures. So maybe one day I'll get back to it, but for now, I think that wasn't a good make. So again, that was 5106. The next one I did, I think you saw was Recently, it's 8370 within the last six, six months, I think. Um, I made the jacket. I attempted to make the skirt as well because it was cute and the button and everything was nice, but it's just not me. It was just to see how the whole combination would look and I did, but I wasn't happy with the skirt. So here is the jacket. I love the basket weave fabric. I've had it for ages. When I started sewing, I bought this at Mood. I didn't know what to do with it, but the fabric stood out. I absolutely love the fabric because I, what can I make? Then when I got it, it's like, it's too heavy. 
I don't know how to sew with this. I, I don't know how to finish this. What will I make? And I've had it for so long till now I realize, aha, I have a pattern. So I used it for this pattern and I had some white, I don't know what you call it. I don't know. I don't know what kind of fabric it is under there, but I had it searched my stash and found it as like, yep, it'd be, look at it. I'm not sure if you can see what it is. It'd be a good lining fabric for this. So I used it to line this jacket and I absolutely love it. I just like how it turned out. I like the princess seams on the inside right here and the big pockets that it has. I had originally put some red buttons on here, but I thought it was too much, so I took them off. There we go. If it was like a whole suit, I think the red button would probably uh, make a statement or help, but I, I don't think it um, fit the whole jacket after I was done. I'm wearing it with jeans or I do not have a white pants that fits or a white pants that I've made yet. But that's an idea. I'm thinking about making a white pants since I just made a white shorts, but we'll figure out what um, pattern or fabric. Probably a Mimi G, that jeans, denim jeans pattern or closet core, the ginger jeans. There's a high-waisted one and another one. Who knows, but I'm looking at those as well. So back to this, sorry, a rabbit hole. Yeah, so I like the way I lined it, pretty neat. And the most interesting piece about this for me or fun piece that I did was the unpicking of the threads. Cause I'm like, oh my God, I'm gonna pick these threads out. It's gonna fall apart. I don't know, let me reread the instructions to make sure that they did say I need to pick the threads out of the the whole pattern. But they did because it's already stitched in here. So that was just another experience for me. Yeah. So I love this one. Um I think this one might be a dry cleaning thing because I'm not I'm not so sure about putting this one in the wash. So yeah. That was McCall's 8370 all right so now we come after all that practice and I thought oh well let's attempt a blazer again so I did this blazer back in perhaps 2019 yeah started sewing 2017 18 late 2017 really 2018 um, 2019 I thought I was bored let's try and do something else so I got my first wool, cotton wool from Mood. I was like, yeah, let me try this. It's not really wool and I might be able to do it because it's stable. I was used to sewing with cotton and stuff like that. Again, fair. So I attempted um, McCall 6172. And if you notice, I've been following me along. Most of my blazers have been the same thing because I was afraid to branch out and try something different and fail. So. For this one, I was pretty surprised that I did it. Again, I'm showing you so you can see the flaws. And I should say not flaws, there are opportunities that, <laughs> that existed that kind of drove me to do better. So I won't call them flaws. Let's call them opportunities to improve the sewing. So this, my attempt at hand stitching but it has held up the test of time, so I think it was okay. <laughs> Here is the inside of this jacket. I, again, was surprised at the lining that it held up. It stood in place. Again, hand stitching. And all this happened because I was fearful of closing the base. I read the instructions, it said what to do, but it's my first attempt and I didn't want to sew it and then have to take the whole jacket through the arm or wherever I was not comfortable. So I was like, let me just stitch it, even though I thought this would never hold up. But at least I could say I attempted it and I did it. This one has shoulder pads, which I, I'm surprised. Up to this day, I don't know how I actually did it. 
Um, I think it's okay, but challenging piece for me at the time was the inset of the sleeves. I thought it would be this piece, the lapel, because I wasn't clear, I wasn't sure on how to do it. I was like, uh, and I'm gonna show you a part of it that wasn't always looking the way it, it, it is right now. So everything else closed correctly, and here is my fear of, maybe it needs a good ironing, but here's the shoulder pad and my fear of setting in sleeves. And I'm showing you this, not to point faults out, but to show you where the insecurities lie for me. I'm not, I'm not one to show you what I sew and how beautiful it is or how gorgeous it is without showing you what my fears are, what the faults are with the garment and where I can improve. So I wanted to show you the whole thing so that you see exactly what it is. It's not everything that's gonna be pretty or beautiful, but I'm showing you so that you can see. We all start somewhere and regardless of how, where we think we are, there's always room for improvement or to learn more. And everything I show you, I swear has some challenge or some portion of it that might look okay on camera, but it's not. So I'm showing you to say, yes, I know some of the things I make are absolutely beautiful, but some of them do have faults. And here's one. It might not seem like a lot, but it is. The other piece of this is, I didn't put pockets on this one. Reason for that is, when I was cutting this, I was like, oh my God, you've come so far, you've stitched it together. Why would you wanna go slit in here to create a pocket? You know nothing about pockets, you know nothing about well pocket, and so fear took me over. I was like, I'll take my losses. This is a whole jacket I can wear. I don't need a pocket. My pants has a pocket, even though I love pockets. My pants has a pocket and I can survive without a pocket. So every time I wear this um, jacket, I was like, darn it, I miss having a pocket. But I look at it that, you know what, I made it. It doesn't have a pocket, but at least I made a jacket. So that was the first attempt. Oh, and the other piece or backstory of this jacket, when I made it, I didn't have this stitching going on. So I made it and it looked homemade. It did look homemade and I wasn't sure what was missing. Something was missing. I couldn't put my finger on it. And then I remember what inspired me to do blazers. I've always loved blazers. And then I went back and looked at a couple of the ones I've had. This is a Talbot, my favorite store. And so every time I have a jacket from Talbot, I'll take a look and see what opportunities exist. First, the linings are gorgeous. I also noticed that between the lining and here, there is this nice piece that is stitched in. I haven't done a jacket with this yet, but it's, it's a goal. I look at the way it's finished and that's how I kind of drive myself as to where I want to be and what I want to be able to do. And I take a look. Things I see, which are different. Sleeve has a different color or a piece of um, lining is different from here. I'm not sure why they do that, but I don't know. But this is a piece I absolutely love. And the signature piece of their stuff is looks like a piece of welt or something like that. It's not the same fabric. Another piece of light wool that's under the collar and another piece here that's a double collar. I haven't seen any pattern with that yet, or I shouldn't say I'm not aware. I don't know every pattern and I don't know um, many of them that I've looked at in detail that have it. I just have stuck to the simple one that I can handle and just recently branched out. This one, I've gone in several times to feel and look, it's not a shoulder, there's no shoulder pad in this one. It's just like something in the sleeve. And I like this part of it. So when I look back at my jacket, I say, aha, uh -huh, that's what was missing, that homemade look. So I went back and I just top stitched this whole lapel thing going on. And the only thing for me, I didn't know where to stitch because when I say I didn't know where to stitch, the top stitching, I don't know if I should have gone under here because when you stitch and come down, this is a piece that's showing outside. And when you come up to the lapel itself, this piece turns over. So was I doing the top stitching on the back end to show on here, or was I doing it here? 
And so I just closed my eyes, made my mind up, made a decision. If it's gone bad, it's gone bad. And I just did it. And that one thing that I did on that jacket changed my whole idea of can I do it? Is this okay or is this normal? Because I realized little things that you do like the stitching, the ironing, all of that does make the difference on the jacket. So that top stitching was what threw me over with that one. After I made that one, I was like, uh-uh, I'm, I'm on a blazer binge. So I went for this one. I had some gold linen I got from, I think this one came from Florida. Um, another um, person who introduced me to sewing and said, yeah, you could do it and all of that. Um, I think it's Mar Marcel um on ig i'll find her thing and put it in the comment section it's and again here's my sleeve thing there's no shoulder pad in this one and here's the lining from the red jacket i just showed you so this was made first and then whatever i had left i used it on that red one I like the idea of this one because I saw something on Pinterest and I go in and I look and I wanted to be able to turn my blazer over or my jacket over and still have a little flare going on here. This for the casual look with the jeans or anything like that. I like I like that look. So that's what I created. And again, this was the same fifth this was the same 6172, my call 6172. I absolutely loved it. And after I was done with this, I had a fear of, okay, when I tried it on, it looks like it needs shoulder pads. I didn't put shoulder pads in, so I unpicked again because I have to go back in to add my shoulder pads. And for this reason, I have not added it because I think it lacks the stability in the shoulders and missing the shoulder pad. Oh, and this one, I attempted to make the lapel. It wasn't the best of lapels, but I did try it. So, it's an attempt. I've wasted, I can say, a lot of good fabric, but in the end, I think I've gained some experience and some confidence in trying to do better or do more. So yes, this is another one. I consider it not finished because the bottom is open. I've worn it though. The bottom is open after my last um, attempt at putting shoulder pads because I wasn't sure if I still wanted to do that. So as you can see, I haven't worn it again. The other ones, I think I've shown them to you before. The most recent one, I won't go over in detail because I've made them recently on the channel. This is the berry one, which I'm sure I have shown you before. And forgive me, for those of you who are watching this for the first time or new, I have them on the channel, so I, I don't want to bore you with it. I'm sorry, I see a thread and I realize this button is falling off. So I need to fix that. A normal pocket under here, you can see, I need to tuck that piece under and top stick properly. But again, I'm showing you my opportunities is what we're calling them. <laughs> yeah, so this one, pretty nicely finished. I absolutely love it. This one is completely sealed, thank goodness. No shoulder pads. I just did a little wool thing in the sleeve um, head just to hold it. Same for this pocket under here. Oh, it's not a pocket. It's not a working pocket. It was just a flap. At this point, I guess I wasn't comfy with um, lapels or pockets. So this one, I just closed the flap over it. And I think it still looks fine. I still work to work and it still looks okay without a pocket. So that's the other one. Again, I'm not going over too much detail because I already have it there. And um, if I can find this one, there's also a green one. That fabric was from Style Maker Fabric. This one's also from Style Maker Fabric. And it's the same pattern with this one. Nothing different about this one. Very same thing. Absolutely nothing different. Oh, yes, there's a difference. Again, I couldn't do the lapels as the pocket designed it. So I just made patch pockets with the, tried to make the inside 
a bit different. Just my way of trying to add pockets so I wouldn't feel as bad as the gray one. Yeah. Yep. So that's that one. And the final one, again, you've seen before, so I won't bore you. And it's this one that I recently made. And this one is Mimi G's 9381. That's the final one. That's Mimi G's 9381. And I'm most proud of it, this one, because I think of all the mistakes or opportunities that I had with the others, I tried to add them to this one. So the lapel with the top stitching. This finished one right here. And thank goodness for um, the video because it explained a lot with regards to this. I wasn't fearful anymore. And I learned something on that video because this slit would never have happened. Buttons need to be changed because they're too different as I explained. But yeah, overall, this is what it looks like. I really love it. And um, I'm working on making my red wool sateen jacket going to be the same thing so yeah this is my jacket collection a complete of the opportunities the ones that need to be finished or the ones that were just trial and error didn't go right so thank you very much for staying with me and exploring so far the little collection I have that I call a jacket collection have a great day see you in the next video bye